Hello, my dear friends. As we know, Muscovy dogs are invasive species with large populations in South America. The population grows and develops strongly, affecting the forest ecosystem and agricultural land. Faced with this extreme situation, added South American citizens and hunters deal with millions of Muscovy ducks. Here is the video, everyone. And share this video with all of your friends so that they can watch it and enjoy it as well. Now let's start a video. Historically, the duck made its debut on European shores in the 16th century, only to later traverse oceans and find a new home in South America during the 18th century. Subsequently, a significant number of these ducks, once confined to farms, stage a daring escape into the wild. creating a feral population that thrived in the untamed expanses of the continent. Adding to the complicity, some Muscovy ducks were deliberately released into the wild, whether for the pursuit of hunting or as a supplemental food for other fauna. What makes the Muscovy duck particularly formidable is its remarkable adaptability not constrained by environmental boundaries, these ducks have infiltrated urban landscapes, furthering their range and influence. Compounding the challenge is their prolific reproductive capacity. These female Muscovy ducks, with astounding efficiency, lay clutches of 10 to 15 eggs with the ability to produce 2 to 3 clutches per year. As true omnivores, Muscovy ducks traverse the culinary spectrum, feasting on a diverse array of plants and animals. From aquatic vegetation to small insects, tadpoles, and even flitting birds, their diet knows little bounds. Firstly, the Muscovy duck engages in fierce competition with native species such as whistling ducks, mallards, and teal for crucial resources like food and nesting territories. This rivalry disrupts the established equilibrium of the ecosystem. Secondly, their insatiable appetite wreaks havoc on aquatic vegetations, endangering even the rarest of plant species. This poses a direct threat to the delicate balance of aquatic ecosystems. Muscovy duck knit traps plays an important role in controlling invasive musk duck populations, especially in South America. This is an effective and low-cost measure implemented simply but with high efficiency. First of all, determining when and where to place traps is crucial to achieving optimal success. The time to set traps is either in the early morning or in the late afternoon, when musk ducks are often most active. Trapping areas should be in areas where they feed a lot, such as ponds, lakes, swamps, and rivers. This ensures high effectiveness when traps are placed when they frequently appear. When performing the trap setting process, some things you need to pay attention to are ensuring that the trap is placed in a discrete location. Out of the sight of ducks, the trap net should be flat, not wrinkled or torn, and the baits such as rice, corn, or bran should be used to attract them into the trap. The number of ducks caught each time depends on the size of the trap and the number of ducks in the area, but usually it catches around 10 to 20 Muscovy ducks. 
Although the Muscovy duck knit trapping method brings many advantages, such as high efficiency, low cost, and ease of implementation, it also comes with disadvantages, injuries to ducks, and not being able to catch all musk ducks are a thing to watch out for. The Muscovy duck hunting has become an effective control measure in reducing invasive musk duck populations, especially in areas with high duck densities and few human populations. This not only helps protect the environment, but also meets the growing needs of South America's farming and hunting communities. The musk ducks are usually active in the early morning or late afternoon, as this creates the best opportunity for hunters to catch them. Observation is an important part of the hunting process. Hunters will spend about 30 to 60 minutes observing before dawn, tracking the duck's movements as they begin to appear. When the musk duck shows up, the hunting action begins. Hunters use guns to shoot ducks, and because they often fly in flocks, many ducks can be captured in one shot. If the duck falls into a far location or underwater, the hunter will take advantage of the support from hunting dogs. These hunting dogs are specially trained, as they will swim out in the water to harvest the ducks and bring them back to the shore. After the hunting process ends, hunters and farmers will harvest them in the fields and bring them back for pressing. This hunting method has yielded positive results for controlling musk ducks populations in South America. According to estimates, every year, South American farmers and hunters successfully hunt around 2 to 3 million musk ducks, minimizing pressure from their invasion. The benefits of hunting muscovy ducks in flooded forests are manifold. First, it minimizes competition between musk ducks and native animals, especially in competition for food and habitat. This helps protecting native animals from decline caused by the imposition of these invasive ducks. Second, this measure helps minimizing the negative impact of musk ducks on the ecosystem. Musk ducks, being omnivores, have the ability to reduce aquatic plant populations, harm aquatic animal habitats, and cause damage to agricultural production. Controlling musk duck populations through hunting is an effective way to reduce these negative impacts and protect the ecosystem. Overall, Hunting Muscovy ducks and the flooded forests of South America isn't only an effective measure to control the musk duck population, but also actively contributes to protecting and maintaining the natural balance in the forests, special ecosystem of the area. Canada geese undertake seasonal migration cycles, moving from breeding grounds in North America to wintering areas in the south in the fall and back in the spring. They often migrate to large herds, which can number up to thousands of animals per herd. Once they move, the distance they cover is several hundred miles. In contrast, gray geese are sedentary but can move within their range. In a case of severe weather, gray geese can also move to areas with more favorable living conditions. They often gather in grassland and swamp areas, where there are abundant food sources and favorable living conditions.
They gnaw on the tree bark and leaves, reducing tree reproduction with a particularly severe impact on young and mature trees. This not only affects biodiversity, but also reduces the natural regeneration capacity of the environment. <laughs> the negative impacts of invasive geese also extend to native animals as they compete fiercely for food and shelter. This leads to pollution declines of native animals, creating a series of fluctuations in the ecological structure. The populations have grown rapidly by millions each year, forcing the government to take measures to deal with invasive goose populations. To have the most effective hunting day, choosing a hunting location is very important. Large fields with lots of grass and food are ideal destinations for them. As specifically in the east and midwest of the United States, a popular tactic for attacking Canada geese is to use fake goose dummies place them in high positions, easily visible from the air. At a best time is early morning before the geese starts to appear. This process will take place quickly as soon as the hunters choose a hunting location. This creates favorable conditions for hunters to observe their movements and behavior. Before starting the hunting process, the most important thing is to prepare all the necessary tools and skills. Shotguns are popular and 12 or 20 calibers. Ball and lead bullets are popular choices for this type. Binoculars help you see from afar, while cover is used to hide your location from the geese view. Hunting skills are the deciding factor between success and failure. The ability to aim accurately is important, especially at long distances. Anticipating the flight of geese and handling unexpected situations are other essential skills. After shooting, Harvesting goose carcasses immediately is important to ensure meat quality and avoid waste. Whether a day of goose hunting is a good harvest or not, the process of harvesting geese is very important. All hunted geese are divided into different areas by the hunter group to harvest. And just one time, one third of a flock of geese can be harvested. It is a very good result when choosing the right area to hunt. To ensure the sustainability of hunting activities, the most important thing is to comply with local regulations and have a valid hunting license. Swamp goose hunting is a popular activity in the United States, especially in the Midwest and the Northeast states. Canada geese are the most common geese hunted on the marsh. The process of hunting geese in the swamp is quite similar to hunting geese in the field. However, it is necessary to choose goose models that can float in water or be fixed with tree branches. Setting this attraction model requires setting the time period when it is still not light.
Placing this sparse goose pattern with a large area can attract more geese. However, in swamp areas, you can only hide in areas with large trees or boats to wait for geese hunting. Hunters need to patiently wait for the geese to arrive. Geese often migrate to the marsh in the early morning or late afternoon. The hunter needs to hit the goose in a critical position so that the goose immediately faints and falls. After the goose falls, the goose can be moved and harvested so as not to affect the quality of the goose meat. The marsh goose hunting season in the U.S. usually starts in October and lasts until March. From about October to December, Canada geese migrate to the marsh to avoid the cold winter. And between January and March, they will migrate back to the north to breed. Therefore, to be able to control the goose populations most effectively, it is necessary to know their behaviors. Hunting is an effective means of controlling goose populations. However, hunting can only control the number of geese to a certain extent without other management measures, so Canada goose numbers in the United States will continue to increase. How are other invasive species in the U.S. being handled by farmers? Let's continue watching more in the rest of the video. First, wild boars are the most invasive large mammals on the planet. They have high fertility, are well adapted and can cause many negative impacts on the Canadian environment and economy. They are hybrid between the European wild boar and the domestic pig. In Canada, feral pig numbers are increasing rapidly, according to wild boar researcher Ryan Brook. The number of wild boar in the Canadian prairies has skyrocketed in 2023, breaking all previous records. The increase in wild boar numbers in Canada is causing concern in the southern states, Alberta and Saskatchewan. These states are preparing for an increase in invasive feral hog sightings. The number of super feral pigs in Canada has increased dramatically in the past decades. They inhabit the Saskatchewan region, which is more than 270,271 square miles large, larger than most countries. Why is the wild boar population growing so rapidly? Canada's terrain and weather are very diverse, from high mountains forests, grasslands, to deserts. Forest area accounts for about 40% of Canada's land area. Forests in Canada are very diverse, including coniferous forests, broadleaf forests, and mixed forests. The delta area accounts for about 14% of Canada's land area. The plains in Canada are typically low, flat areas of land used for growing crops and raising livestock. This creates conditions for many different animals to live, including wild boars. Feral pigs have been detected in all 10 Canadian provinces and three territories.
high adaptability to many different living environments, wild boars can also withstand many different types of weather, from cold climates in the north to warm climates in the south. They appear everywhere in the jungle and have a lot of food. In Canada, these areas are concentrated mainly in the south, where the climate is warmer and there are many trees and grasslands. Therefore, Canada's terrain and weather are generally suitable for wild boar habitat. This explains why feral pig populations in Canada have been increasing sharply in recent years. In particular, the lack of direct natural competitors is a prominent feature of feral pigs in Canada. There are no animals in their habitat that directly challenge them, which creates an unrivaled advantage in the animal populations where they live. Even large carnivores, such as bears and wolves, Despite regularly hunting other native prey, such as sheep and goats, are often not particularly interested in wild boars. Currently, the independence of wild boars from the hunting pressure of large predators allows their populations to preserve and grow strongly year after year. This is one of the reasons why wild boar populations has grown and become the most invasive species. Large field areas, abundant food sources. Here, Canadian farmers do not build protective fences, so their food sources are even more diverse. According to a report by Agricultural Canada, Feral pigs cause up to $1.5 billion in crop damage each year in Canada. This damage mainly occurs in fields growing corn, peanuts, wheat, and vegetables. Inspection and protection of Canadian farmers' fields is being carried out, but only part of the fields can be protected. Farmers use biological drugs to cope and protect their fields. These measures are being considered because they may affect and pollute the environment. Officials in Canada are actively searching for solutions to the problem of invasive feral swine, a challenge that currently has no effect measures to stop the spread of the species. In the context, they have begun efforts to share information and experience with wild boar control measures However, current measures such as hunting, building fences and using traps still face significant challenges. Not only that hunting is not an optimal solution because it can disperse wild boar populations and increase the risk of other problems, but it also faces opposition from some wildlife rights defenders. In the contrary, the use of traps and construction of separation fences are facing major challenges in terms of high costs, making it difficult to strongly deploy these measures on a large scale. In this context, collaboration between research institutions, governments, and communities can play an important role in effective and sustainable solutions to this problem. In addition, the government advises people not to approach the super wild boar but they stay away and notify local authorities. Super boars are a serious threat and can persist for centuries, and immediate action is needed to stop their spread. So since these solutions have been affecting in preventing the growth of colonies of some invasive species, do you believe in any other better solution? If so, 
Please don't forget to share your comments and opinions down below. Plus, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to support our channel with our upcoming videos. And lastly, don't forget to share this video with all your friends so that they can watch it and enjoy it as well.